Hi, my name is David and this is NTI Online. Today I'm going to walk you through replacing the circulator in your TRX 85, 110, 120 and 150 combi boiler. The process is the same for all of them and to do this you want to start by draining the unit of all water. Now this is unique to each system depending on where your drain and fill valves are located so that you'll have to look at individually. What I can tell you is there's a drain valve beneath the boiler that you can loosen. I'll show you a screenshot of that in just a moment. And the other tip I'll give you is that you can go into the manual operation mode and by doing this you can operate the diverting valve up and down releasing any water that could potentially be trapped and getting rid of as much as possible before we begin the procedure. To get into manual operation mode, press and hold OK and escape. After five seconds, 222 shows up on the screen. Enter the code by hitting the plus button until you see 234 and pressing OK. Now you should be on the menu screen, hit OK, and you should get a flashing zero. If you get three dashed lines, just wait a moment longer, the control is thinking. We're going to go up to menu two, press OK, up to number six, hit OK again, and then we're on 260. This is manual operation mode. We're going to set that equal to number one and hit OK to save it. You'll hear the diverting valve operating in the unit in most cases. Next thing we're going to do is go up to menu 263, press OK. This will either be set to 1 or 0 depending on the position of the valve at the moment. What you'll want to do is change it to the other number, press OK. Give it a moment for the valve to actuate. Drain any water that you can, press OK. Cycle back to the other position, wait for the valve to transition, drain any additional water you can, and from there you've done as much as you can to rid the boiler of water. At this point, you'll want to go back to menu 260 and change it to zero. And that just turns manual operation mode off. Hit escape till you get back to the main menu, and now it's time to disconnect power from the appliance by unplugging it from the wall or shutting it off at the breaker. It's important that you do this before beginning. Now that our unit is drained, we're ready to remove the circulator. And even though we drained it to the extent possible, it's still a good idea to keep a couple of rags and just put them in the lower part of the cabinet here to absorb any water that might leak out of the pump and potentially prevent any water from dripping onto the control board. Now the next step I'm going to do is unnecessary in the field, but in order to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing, I am going to remove the burner door and the side of the boiler. You can certainly do this, but it is not required. To remove the burner door, there's four screws. One in the top and the bottom in the front. And then two more. There's a Torx T20 about mid cabinet in the top and another one in the bottom. Now that we've done that, we can push this up to one side. The next thing I'm going to do is disconnect the blower motor, spark generator, and I'm going to disconnect our electrical box just to get better access so you can see what's going on with the pump. The pump harness is this black one here. You'll want to reach in and grab that and disconnect it. With those harnesses out of the way, it's a little bit easier to see what's going on inside. I'm going to remove the gas connection from the Venturi. Use care when doing this that you don't lose this gasket. Next up, I'm going to remove the four 10 mil bolts that hold the burner door on. That's complete. I can remove the burner door, lower motor, and the air intake box all as one assembly. And of course, you'll want to disconnect your flame rod as well. Now that that's out of the way, there's a couple of clips in here you'll want to pay attention to. So you're going to disconnect the return sensor from the pipe, including the wires, and push it to one side. 
You're going to remove the clip that holds the copper pipe up to the heat exchanger. There's a second clip that holds the copper pipe to the pump assembly. Normally what I do is leave that on until I've removed the pump from the boiler. We'll set the clip to one side. You reach in back here, the water pressure sensor can now be disconnected. And usually this ground wire, I just leave it as it is and just push it off to one side. Now you'll need to take your T20 screwdriver and remove the screws in the top left and the bottom right hand corners of the pump assembly. These look a little bit like a wood screw. They're a self-tapping screw for plastic. Keep those, you'll need them for reassembly. Second screw. Grab the pump, push it to one side gently. Should slide off, then you're going to pull down to remove it from the boiler. At this point, you'll want to remove the water pressure switch and transfer it to the new assembly. To do that, simply push this metal clip backwards, pull the sensor out. When you snap it into your new pump, put it in, pull the clip, and make sure that it's on there securely. Remove the clip that secures the copper pipe to the pump assembly. This pipe will be transferred to your new pump. You'll want to reinstall that with the clip. When you reinstall each of these clips, it's important to remember that they are directional. There's a small side, which goes around the copper pipe, and a large side, which goes around either the heat exchanger or the flange on the pump assembly. Installation is the reverse of removal. One thing you should be aware of, though, is there's a small O-ring on the side of the pump here. What I like to do is take it off, install it, on the assembly that's inside the boiler still, and then reassemble. Once the pump is firmly snapped in place, put the screws back in. I recommend putting each screw in loosely and then tightening them once they're both started. Reinstall both of your clips ensuring you Pay attention to the direction that they go. And with each of these clips, give them a little twist to make sure they're securely seated. There's another one that goes between the plastic assembly and the copper pipe. Remember to plug your water pressure switch back in, otherwise when you fire the boiler up you will have an error code. Check that harness. Plug your pump in while you have it apart, it's a little easier to reach. Once all this is secure, reattach your return sensor. This goes up next to the bottom of the heat exchanger on the straight part of the pipe, and it wants to be about as close to the boiler as you can get it. And you've now replaced the pump in your boiler. Once you have the new pump in, it is important that you bleed all the air from the system, so you'll want to run the boiler with the gas turned off until you hear air stop circulating. You can use manual operation mode, menu 260, to transfer between heating and domestic in order to help purge that air. And at that point, once all the air is gone, you've now completed this, the replacement of the pump and you can operate your boiler normally. Thanks for attending NTI Online. My name is Dave Nicholson.